Great. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this session of the Government Operations and Fiscal Policy Committee and a joint meeting with our Education and Culture Committee. Uh, today, we will be discussing Supplemental Appropriation 24-67 to the FY24 Operating Budget, Montgomery County Government, Department of General Services, Black Rock Center for the Arts. Uh, the amount is $260,000, and the source of the funds is General Funds Undesignated Reserves. Um, today, we will be uh, reviewing the request from the County Exec's Office and make a recommendation on this appropriation to the full council. Um, before I turn it over to Mr. Mia, does the uh, co-chair have anything to say? Mm -hmm. Thank you. We had the public hearing yesterday on this. Um, and. I think all the speakers were very eloquent in talking about how important of a community hub Black Rock is um, and how we want that to be. And so look forward to this being the start, not the end of a conversation about how we make sure that you're thriving. So glad to be here. Thank you. Great. All right, Mr. Mia, I think I will turn it over to you to walk through the packet. Okay, absolutely. Thank you. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Yes, the executive is re requesting $260,000 in a supplemental appropriation. It's being characterized as a grant to the uh, Germantown Cultural Arts Center, also known as the Black Rock Center for the Arts. The purpose of the grant would provide loan payoff assistance, gap funding for operating budget shortfalls, and developing a long-term uh, strategic and fiscal sustainability plan. I will also note that the executive is recommending uh, Last week, on March 27th, he's transmitted a memo requesting another $260,000 in the FY25 recommended operating budget for what appears to be fundamentally the same purposes. So the total request for Black Rock Center would be $520,000 between 24 and 25. Um, the packet goes into a brief history of the Black Rock Center. It is not a complete history. It really discusses the, um, the creation of the, the center back in 2002. Um, Shortly after it was opened, the council at the time provided um, or approved $4 million to purchase the center, thus making it a county-owned facility. And in more recent years, the center has received um, state funding, uh, some of which uh, was for, in the form of a matching fund, uh, matching county and private funding to receive the state funding. Um, the packet really talks more about a 2019 OLA report kind of describes the difficulty in, in ascertaining how much the county provides in terms of public support for the arts sector in the county. Um, it describes eight county-owned facilities, including Black Rock, as well as AFI Silver, um, and the Fillmore and Strathmore, and the different forms of county support that each receives. Um, we, we also talk about the Arts and Humanities Council and their recipient of, in the current budget, about $7 million, which again is used in the form of providing grants, including operating expense support to various organizations through a application process. Um, in terms of the analysis from staff, um, it, it's a difficult exercise to analyze it because it's really hard to determine what the appropriate context is of this request. We looked at um, the current FY24 approved budget for DGS includes little less than $900,000 to support AFI Silver, which similarly is a 20 plus year uh, public facility um, that is, can be described as the cornerstone of downtown Silver Spring. Um, however, AFI does have a different audience, it provides different forms of art, and has different needs. So that's one comparison, but it's not apples to apples. We looked at um, the grant process uh, that a the Arts and Humanities Council of Montgomery County operates. They provide awards ranging up to $50,000 for general operating expense support. The requests um, may not exceed 35% of the organization's most recently completed fiscal year's operating revenue. Um, there are certain eligibility requirements, but that is another mechanism uh, for arts organizations to receive uh, public support. Finally, we looked at what was available for Germantown Arts Cultural Center's uh, finances, their most recent Form 990 filing with the IRS, which covers uh, fiscal the fiscal year ending June 2022, which, so it's already almost two years old. It does have some data on revenues from uh, fiscal 22 as well as the preceding year. It shows generally um, increase in revenues coming in. Uh, this, again, is coming out of the pandemic. Um, it shows expenditures. Um, uh, also increasing and generally shows that the financial position of the organization as uh, improving from the prior year. Again, that information is over two years old. The detail is in the packet. Um, uh, we don't, staff doesn't have information on more since those last two years. So all it has to say is that we don't have a staff recommendation given the, the, the difficulties in objectively 
uh, drawing a conclusion on, on the need and the request, um, but we do have committee questions uh, for the, for the uh, Black Rock Center on what the need is for and how will they really develop their strategic plan and what's the long-term uh, plan going forward. So I'll leave it there for any questions. Great. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Mia, for uh, that analysis and overview. Um, and maybe we should um, start, um, whoever wants to answer, <laughs> uh, start with answering those questions. But um, I think first is digging into what what is the money for? Or what, is the, what does the request cover and the need at the moment um, might help us kind of level set? Uh, thank you. Yes. So at this point, we are $91,000 into the use of an EIDL loan to cover payroll. Uh, we lost a significant amount of funding doing losing Osher University was housed at BlackRock for the last two years, and they pulled out also due to budget deficits. So it was a loss of $120,000 that we discovered in December. Um, so um, in anticipating the situation, unlike many arts organizations that took hits during um, the pandemic, our budget went up due to the Up County Hub. So mm -hmm. in many ways, we are a very unique bird. Our budget at that point was $3.1 million, um, and without the Hub, 1.7, and under this last year, 1.6. So we have been cutting and cutting and cutting. Uh, so the, this, these funds would repay uh, the idle loan of $91,000. Uh, $91, it would provide support for $77,000. It is currently a cash uh, deficit, which changes daily. Uh, and it would provide us a cushion so that we're not ending July 1st um, at zero. Uh, it's been very challenging to operate you know, day-to-day -day, uh, paychecks making decisions. We've got bond money that we're using to make upgrades to the facility and the outdoor stage. And we're, you know, playing wacky games and paying those in installments so we can get reimbursement before we go. Once you hit below 50K and you have expenses at $128,000 a month, it becomes very tricky to operate. Great. So basically, you're covering payroll and day-to-day and -day operations. Is that uh, addressing the, the $91,000 idle, that yeah. right now that idle is our only reserve. Um, in recent years, it's, it's, well, actually, as long as I can remember looking back, there has never been a reserve. So that 150 idle is the reserve. Uh, and it would address that so we can put that back. Great. Mr. Um, yeah. Th thank you so much, uh, Chair Stewart. And for the record, my name is Ken Hartman Espada. I'm, I'm uh, Assistant Chief Administrative Officer. I got to get used to the new new titles um, for uh, the County Executive. Um, the, we while we, we are we we have been working with BlackRock, and they're in a unique position. As as the packet points out, there are a certain number of nonprofits that operate our facilities, county facilities, um, for purposes outlined in agreements and. Currently, BlackRock operates on an agreement through DGS to, to manage this facility and to make sure it's successful. So it's in our interest to, to make sure that this organization gets back on its feet. The alternative is, uh, is a cold, dark building and, and us starting over again. So while we understand that there are some short-term financial um, uh, measures that need to be taken to, to stem the bleeding at BlackRock, we also uh, fully expect to be working with um, BlackRock um, through a grant agreement with deliverables on, on developing their strategic plan, um, reviewing their financials with them, review, working with their board to, um, to develop that, um, that um, development plan, the board development plan, uh, to get them sustainable. Um, uh, and uh, th this is something that, that we've already begun work in outlining the agreement. Um, but uh, and as as Mr. Dice would point out, this isn't our first radio, rodeo. And working with nonprofits in our in county managed facilities that um, end up in um, uh, who need assistance, um, we we um, and we're used to getting engaged, having these monthly check ins, uh, holding um, the the nonprofit accountable for meeting the milestones. Um, uh, so we don't have to make that tough decision um, down the road. So uh, I'll stop there, uh, unless Mr. Dice has something to add to that. Uh, well, in anticipation of what might be other questions, I can. Mm -hmm. David Dice, Director of Montgomery County Department of General Services. As Mr. Hartman pointed out, uh, 
the the agreements that we have with these eight identified uh, arts facilities fall under uh, lease agreements, and the lease agreements stipulate the responsibilities of both parties. Uh, in all of these cases, the uh, county under the portfolio of DGS owns the property. The operators of that properties, various properties, operate under different agreements depending upon the nature of the services and, uh, that they perform. Obviously, something like uh, uh, like uh, uh, the operation in Silver Spring, the Strathmore especially, but also Live Nation in particular is a private organization, runs for profit, and uh, and that therefore, as you see on page four of the packet, uh, we don't we contribute nothing. To that, they're wholly mm -hmm. responsible for everything related to that facility. But all the others, and even even the Fillmore, we own the building. The management and operation of the property varies from entity to entity. Uh, under the lease agreement, the county for Black Rock, the county is responsible for water, sewer, gas, and electrical services, as well as any capital maintenance and replacement. Uh, the the organization is expected to have some escrowed funds for. A replacement of materials and equipment related to the performing arts themselves, like curtains and certain furniture, fixture, and equipment. Uh, and there are reporting functions in, 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 uh, that we have with BlackRock as well as other facility, other arts operations where we can request audited books, annual uh, financial reports, and perform audits of our own. So uh, we have opportunities to do that. Mr. Hartman may, may outline that in detail as the steps forward. As he did mention, we've run into this before, uh, particularly COVID put a big strain on a lot of arts organizations that run pretty much down to the wire anyway. And, uh, and so uh, we've worked with them and provided help with the organizational structures, uh, management of accounts and things of that sort, and seen happily all of those get back on their feet. So I, I, we're positive that we can work with uh, uh, BlackRock and see the same results here. Great. Um, before I continue, I just want to note that uh, Council Member Mink is with us um, uh, remotely, and at this joint session, we do have a guest. Uh, Council Member Balcom is has also attended. Um, before I turn it over to colleagues, I know uh, Chair Jawando has some questions. Mr. Hartman Espada, I just had a follow-up question. When you talk about the monthly check-ins and everything is that's talking about moving forward under a, a grant agreement. But for this supplemental, um, will will those monthly meet? Will you be starting that here? Um, I guess this goes to the question of when are we starting on the strategic plan and and how that is going to be moving forward. So I'll I'll allow Katie to answer the questions about the strategic plan. But we w the these funds will be dispersed under an agreement that will have. Um, milestones and accountability measures uh, that will require the monthly check-ins with, uh, with the county and board leadership and, and Katie and her team it will require us to, to review together their financial audits. Uh, as David say, said, those, those are reported to us through the lease agreement. We'll take a closer look at that alongside them to, to figure out where, um, where they are. Um, and in the development of the strategic plan, we'll, we'll be working with Katie on the dates for the deliverables. You know, we'd, we'd like to see a contract of, of the uh, a copy of the contract with their strategic plan consultant. Uh, we, we'd like to know what dates they have in mind for touch, uh, touching base with the board, staff, and stakeholders. We, we'd like to know when they expect to complete this plan and, and six uh, months to one year uh, accomplishments. Um, and um, we need to know other uh, dates for deliverables, such as their dev development plan. Mm -hmm. or any um, rethinking when it comes to the board composition or expectations of, of board of directors members. So there's, there, we can go into greater detail. Katie can talk a little bit more about strategic planning process that, this, that they are already engaged in. So at this point, we have outcomes, and we have uh, think tank sessions that are up and running that involve uh, county constituents, stakeholders, board members, staff members. Um, and the consultant uh, on May 11th, um, building on the back of an already existing Black Rock program and an artisan's market. We're bringing in different constituent groups and hosting an open house. 
uh, to gather feedback from the community. I believe that the sustainability that comes from Black Rock's future is rooted in the community that we serve and hearing those voices and making sure that it's reflective of the community we serve will be critical. Uh, it's intended that that uh, data also include um, a plan for financial sustainability, which I believe the model will look ultimately very different than it has. We're 20 years into a model that hasn't worked mm -hmm. with an audience um, and theater size that's too small to put art on the stage. Um, I believe the partnerships and the community work ahead and the civic role that we play in tandem with arts and culture is the way that we will move forward. Mocom Con was a huge success mm -hmm. um, and some of the other community festivals. I believe that, again, we're a unique bird and it will require some outside uh, the box thinking with everyone here that's in this room. Hopefully it's done by the fall of 2024. We don't have time to waste. Okay. Thank you. Chair Duana. Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate the questions, and uh, as I said at the beginning, you know, we love BlackRock. So all of this is said with that in mind. Um, having we had to do this, Director Dice, you mentioned, you know, I remember when la a few years ago we had to step in and help Strathmore, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a couple times, and and uh, as you said, this has happened before. Uh, and I'm a little. I would like us to do better in the communication because December, like I didn't know how bad, like until just recently, like it was like payroll, like how bad it was. Yeah, and it is bad and and, and even in the transmittal. So I just say, you know, we, there needs to be more information. Like we shouldn't hear the report from Mr. Mia like we did. Uh, there needs to be like the lease agreement. All this is great information, but just a little more. We've known about this for several months. I'm assuming conversations have been happening. I know you, Katie, I know you were like, I need help, um, and I would just ask that, you know, I feel a little not as prepared as I think the committee should have been and the council should have been for a, a supplemental appropriation of this size. Um, and so I just want to say that going forward. Uh, I think when we take up the, and this is going to be my first question for you, Mr. Hartman, my understanding the second 260 is related to FEMA, you're using some FEMA in in money, I, d I thought I saw that somewhere, but maybe not. That, that, that is correct. The county executive last week transmitted an uh, amendment to the FY25 recommended budget. Okay. Be uh, as you remember, there was the $33 million hanging out there in F FEMA reimbursements. Yeah. We hadn't received, we received notice we were going to receive it, but because of policy and agreements with the council, we, we, didn't, we couldn't show it sure. in the recommended budget until we actually had the money in our accounts. So once that funding came in, and it came in the day we transmitted the budget, we sent the council an amendment to the recommended uh, FY25 budget. Right, but the money is, so the fee, I know we're talking about this appropriation, but just in, in advance, I would love, is the FEMA reimbursement connected to activities of BlackRock, yes? No, no it, was, it was just it's a, just a, a reimbursement flat out reimbursement for outlays the county had spent Perfect. during COVID. Got it, okay, and obviously that, that makes sense. Um, so. So that would be my first point. Just please, you know, I would love as a follow up. We all want this to continue. We know it's an emergency. You've you've stated that, but like the lease, what's in the lease agreement? Who who on your staff? You said the county. There's going to be measurable. Who's going to be overseeing that in the county executive's office? Can, you, Ken? Yeah, okay. under the lease agreement, the county gets two seats on Black Rock's board of trustees. I believe one is from the county executive and one from the county council. And I don't know who the council's representative is. On. I, I don't know if we have one right now, but I would imagine it'd be you, but yeah, we should figure that out. All right, well, that's something to follow up on. Uh, okay. At this time, we have Greg Wims and Dale Tibbetts. Uh, so we don't have Dale, a Dale's just holding over <laughs> from, his previous, from his previous <laughs> job, maybe. Two, two seats at the same time, maybe. <laughs> okay, so we need to look into that. Um, but yeah, this is the type of stuff. I just think, you know, we want to be hand-in-hand -hand partners. Obviously, we have a responsibility when spending taxpayer dollars to for them to know like this should be in the packet like you know yeah. like if someone someone shouldn't have to watch this to see the what, what this why we did this you know and again I think we should do it but I just want to make sure that there's more transparency around what's going on um, the financial position I agree with you BlackRock's unique right like it's not you said something that was scary but also lets me know you're thinking about the future you said it's not big enough to put art on stage Right, that's a fundamental shift in 
what the entity is, right? And so I'm assuming that your, your consultant that you have is help, is leading you through mm -hmm. strategic process to re-envision and reimagine with community input. You want to say more about that? Yeah, and it, uh, equity is, is centered. We want to bring 70% of BIPOC populations into the space and hear voices. Uh, if, if we want an engaged community, the community needs to be engaged. Uh, and so hearing from people um, about what they want and need from the space, I mean, we are it. I mean, no offense to top golf, uh, but we have yeah. great potential. <laughs> You know, I drive around the county and I have, you know, nook envy for where people are sitting and reading and having picnics and there are water fountains and there's public art. Um, and, and Germantown lacks that. Um, and I am a resident and have been since 1977 at three. And I see the space as critical to the up county. I see us as the gateway to the agricultural reserve. Uh, and so I see us as a civic and engagement area through the lens of arts and culture and the lack of an incorporated city for, you know, the largest community in, in the county. Appreciate that. And I think uh, last thing I'll say is just on the spirit of collaboration. So can you just to say you will be the one monitoring the process for this grant and for the for this appropriation in the future? Yeah, both both me and uh, Mr. Dice's team will okay. be working on, on this uh, as we've well, worked in the past before. I would just ask that you identify the actual. You guys deal with a lot. Yeah. Um, if there there are people that work that are going to be the actual points of contact, so we can put our okay. staff. Well, for DGS, the leases and, and uh, compliance with the lease requirements uh, are managed by my office of real estate and okay. the chief of that office. Uh, so all the reports that come in and all of the accounting for compliance goes through that office. And uh, again, I was not aware of the situation until it came up here. So uh, immediately start pulling out the leases, look at the terms, looking for reports. I've got staff digging for reports to see what reports we may or may not have received from BlackRock in the right. last year. Right, so we got a lot of catching up to do. And Absolutely. then finally, just, uh, We've got the Arts and Humanities Council here, mm -hmm. who obviously has a grant relationship in a different way. It's a lot of the programming and arts-related work, realizing you to do more. You know, I, I, as I've asked over the last couple of days offline, you two talking, you all talking more and working mm -hmm. together. Um, I, you know, uh, to re-envision and reimagine uh, what BlackRock is and going to be, I think will be important too. And and I'm hoping we can the next appropriation, we can have more information in the packet. <laughs> you know, uh, related to all of this so that it can just be on the record. So mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of work to do, but I appreciate it. Great. Thank you. Actually, I just want to follow up on something. Um, depending on where this goes this afternoon, though, if it goes to full council, I would actually say we want all this information in the packet before it goes to full council. And yeah. I would actually ask that we double check on whether or not there is supposed to be a council representative and you get back to us by the end of the week. Because I'm going to say that I assumed, uh, and you should never assume anything that um, since I'm the council representative on Strathmore, that council member Balcom was the, the council rep at Black Rock. So if, if we are supposed to have a council rep, I'd like to rectify that situation. Just, just to possible. clarify, as I'm looking at the terms, it's that the county executive will appoint two voting members to serve on Black Rock's board of trustees. One of those two is to serve on the Black Rock Finance Committee. So it's only two representatives from the, the county government, and they're designated by the county executive. It does not specifically state the county council. Okay, so that's different than the Strathmore. Yeah, yeah, so we can change that. Okay. And, and we are absolutely w willing, to, of course, to work with you. To if, if you have identified someone on the council who'd like to fill this role, We'll bring him along. I, she's standing, <laughs> standing right here. And, and typically, this for us, it would be the regional service director, but we're not going to put Ruben Rosario into this role right away. I'll stay involved, and of course, Mr. Tibbetts will stay involved. Great. Okay. Uh, Council President Friedson. Yeah, appreciate that. First of all, I am going to propose that that be made as an amendment yeah. to the agreement, and that we have a council representative and an executive representative, and I think it you know, yeah. should be the district council member. Um, so I'll just note that, um, I, you know, I, obviously the fact that this wasn't shared and known and hasn't been thought, I mean, it seems like there's only one board representative. I mean, the website says Greg Wims is the representative. 
on the board, so just... He was. Dale took his space, and then we had um, County Parks representation prior to that, that that hadn't been refilled. So now is a good time to, to rethink as Greg uh, is phasing out. Yeah, yeah, so I think we need to rethink that. I think that would be helpful, and I do think it makes sense to have a council representative on the board. I, I also, I'll just say, I appreciate the rethinking of what BlackRock is, because I do think that is fundamental to this conversation. T to me, BlackRock, different from many of the other organizations, is not really primarily an arts organization. It's a community hub and has been functioning in that capacity. And the business model right now doesn't work because it is not really set up to be that. And it's in this dynamic, I think, right now where it's in between those two things, which we need to sort out. Money is part of that. I acknowledge that, but there's much more to the planning and the strategic view of what that should look like. I very much hope that arts is a big part of what BlackRock does and will continue to be part of that. I think you know, there is tremendous opportunity. Uh, you know, some artists need a smaller stage and would benefit from having a smaller stage. And uh, given the uh, community that it is representative of and the interest and the intentionality that you talked about you know i think it makes a lot of sense to do that but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's a money-making endeavor and so i just think we need to be you know if, if if the theater isn't big enough to charge enough to you know to to pay uh, for for all the expenses so I, I just i think we have to be honest about that i need think we need to be really strategic and thoughtful about that, I think we, you know, as part of this effort, we should be taking a step back and really thinking through, you know, what it is we're asking this place and space to be. I will say, you know, Bethesda doesn't have a you know a, a rec center in, in its downtown hub. It's a real problem. It's a real missing piece. Um, the uh, regional service center doesn't function in that way, and Mr. Hartman Espada can speak uh, to that. Uh, you know, Silver Spring has that, and you see, you know, we were just there. You see how important that is, uh, you know, to the, the the community. The Up County Regional Service Center is not in the downtown area, in Germantown. It does not serve the the function of a gathering place and space. It's a place that puts on government programs and provides government services. There's a need for that too, but that's 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 serving a different niche in a different role. So. Um, you know, I, I think it's important that we really get a handle on what this is, what we expect it to be, what we're asking an organization to do, what this partnership looks like, what the expectations are, what it is and what it isn't. And, you know, we have to understand what the financial consequences of those decisions and expectations are. So, you know, I, I think that we're at an inflection point. I, you know, we, we probably never should have been at the place that we are now, I'm glad we're finally, you know, grappling with the reality of it. Uh, but uh, this is one of the most important parts of the county, one of the fastest growing parts of the county. Black Rock serves as the community hub for this, you know, which is would be the largest city. I mean, I think we need to say that. I mean, Germantown would be the largest city if it were. in Montgomery County if it were an incorporated city. And this would be the city square. And so, you know, I, I think in, in light of that, that's you know, how I view that. But, you know, I think it's important that we have the, the council representation and that we acknowledge what this is and what this isn't. Thank you. Council Member Katz. Thank you very much. On the whole idea that it would be, be the largest city if it were incorporated, if you had all of Silver Spring that has a Silver Spring address, it would probably be larger. And if you had Gaithersburg that has a Gaithersburg address, some of which is almost in Damascus, that would be larger. So I don't believe that that's part of the conversation here. I, I do believe that we need to communicate better, and I think that's an extremely important. Um, and I agreed about the representation. I, I know that she probably kept moving over further and further when we said you need another job to do, Marilyn, but, but you do. And, and you need to be there for a lot of reasons because you've been there over the years and, and saw what did and didn't happen. This is a building for much more than just the arts. It's certainly important for the arts, but it's a much more important building than the arts. And 
Uh, in my opinion, it is it is not an option to have an empty building. There, it never should be for any uh, uh, government building, especially this one. This one is is really. We keep saying it's unique. It's very unique, and and it really is the home to to so many different uh, areas in in the up county. You know, when you can't make payroll, that's not a red flag. That's the worst red flag. That's saying, you know, if you didn't have a, a, a government or a, a, a rich uncle someplace, you'd be, you'd be done. And we can't have that. We can't afford that. You can't afford that. And we have to make certain that that never happens again. We have to have the reserves. We have to have all of those things that are so necessary to keep everybody going. And, and I do think it's got to be noted that, you know, we're saying that this is losing money and yada. Parkland doesn't make money <laughs> in, in Montgomery County. I mean, you know, if we, if we looked at their budget and looked at it, it's not, they're not money makers in a prop. It's a different type of a profit. We, we gain uh, for having people do things in a different way. And you could say that about ride on bus. You can say that about so much of the government functions. I think bottom line on this is we need to do this. We need to figure out as quickly as we can how to avoid this. You're not. I don't know that you're ever going to make a profit. Let's let's be realistic. And if your if your your uh, uh, seating is too small, then we have to figure out what what you can do in that seating. Or I, I don't know that there's a how much more it would cost to expand and what it would mean interiors and all of that. But we have to figure that out. And we also have to figure out, though the arts are extremely important, and don't get me wrong, if the public there does not want the arts that you were uh, representing, that you were saying here tonight we have this, this, uh, this show, then we have to figure out the shows that the public does want. And, and that becomes so very necessary. So I, I'm supportive of this. I certainly want to make sure that BlackRock is, it, it continues and, 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 and uh, is a, a functioning part of Montgomery County. It needs to be and it will be as far as, as far as I think all of us are concerned. But bottom line is we need to have these red flags way early so that we can be of assistance all through. So thank you very much, Madam Chair. Great, thank you, uh, Council Member Mink. Hi, thank you. Um, I, I'll, I'll echo much of what colleagues have said so far that obviously the priority here is we absolutely need to make sure that the doors stay open for BlackRock uh, and, um, and also that we're anticipating a, a fundamental shift in, uh, in how we see and how we fund the space and looking forward to getting some clarity on how that should look. Um, I also want to echo the concerns about the communication and kind of the, the lack of detail that we have uh, at this point to make a pretty big decision. Now, granted, this is kind of half of the decision that we have so far, um, which is also part of my concern because, you know, two weeks ago I was anticipating um, that we were just looking at kind of this first tranche and, uh, you know, understanding that the FEMA money just came in, you know, while we were on recess last week, but I wish that I had been kind of thinking about the full scope and that our, our, the public who came to testify, that they were able to kind of understand that and speak to the full scope. Um, you, you know, all, all those pieces, I know that's, that's not intentional, um, but again, just noting on the communication front, uh, I think that kind of clarity and transparency is important as when we're talking about the size of numbers and when we're talking about arts funding that is, you know, very much needed in, in many corners of the community. Um, really appreciate uh, Council Member Balcombe um, and Ms. Hecklinger for uh, getting some more information to me over the last couple of days, helping to, uh, Council Member Balcombe for helping to facilitate um, the transfer of some of that information um, as I was trying to kind of better understand where these numbers generated from. Um, and, uh, and so I'm hoping to see more of that information in the final packet as well, but appreciate the increased information that I got over the last day. And just to break some of that down, looking at some of those numbers, I, I see that we have um, anticipating for FY25 an anticipated monthly deficit um, of about 16,000 a month based on the, uh, the deficit that we have for anticipated deficit for FY24. 
um, and uh, that the request that is before us today is for um, the deficit from the year, which does not include, of course, the 115,000 cash on hand that the, uh, that we had at the start of the of the fiscal year, um, and that needs to be accounted for. Looking at FY25, um, that it has the repayment of the um, idle loan, and that it, it includes funding for the first month of FY25, um, and noting that the requested funding for FY25 is um, is $128,000 of operating expenses. And uh, my understanding is that that is, it's not the anticipated deficit for that first month. Um, it's a little bit of cushion because uh, it's not exactly clear, you know, when, what month your revenues are gonna come in and it's to give you a little bit of cushion even operating, you know, without a cushion besides the idle loan funds. Um, and I think that that makes sense. But again, I think that clarity with, you know, with us, with the public is important um and uh as we as we look at the next tranche in fy25 uh i think that having increased clarity there is going to be really important as well um on the idle on the idle loans uh that wanted to check in about the what what is the so idle loans right there's there's no interest for the first year when did the clock start the 12 month clock start on that We've started paying interest on the idle. Uh, we started paying, it's roughly 720 something a month. Interest only started in October of 20, what year is it, 2023. Um, I'll be long gone <laughs> by the time that it's paid off, uh, but it's manageable and it, it's here for these reasons uh, for for when we get into trouble. Um, but I'd like to, to, to put it back because right now it is our reserves. I understand. Um, and then this is, a, you know, anticipating some of the conversation that we'll have around the next tranche, but just to kind of foreshadow it a little bit, if you want to speak to it some, um, the, the second tranche is going to be looking at FY25 starting the second month of FY25. Um, as we're looking ahead for, you know, the rest of the rest of this year, including the beginning of FY25, are we, uh, are you looking at ways to, uh, get, well, Okay, so I think you've noted some of the ways in which we anticipate uh, the change, that some of the changes that were more of a community focus, the community engagement is really important, making sure that we're reaching out to diverse uh, community members. Um, given that those things are already known, um, is that something that is going on heavily now and are you seeing results from that? So we're spending less now than we have since before 2017. Um, and in terms of cash analysis uh, and, and the communication, this problem is not new. Uh, there's years where there's $13,000 on hand at the end of the year, $36,000, 115 was pretty robust, except for during the COVID time because of the, um, the hub. Uh, and so I have two boards uh, budget scenarios, one at 1.4 and one at 1.6. Um, I can tell you with my plan B playbook, should we not get this funding, the furloughs are significant and I would find it hard to execute a green fest or a Juneteenth or manage a website or send thank you notes for development. Um, it, it would leave just uh, five of us at full time furloughing the gallery director, the artistic director at part time, 10 hours of development, no marketing and communications. Uh, so I would need to really rethink the 1.4 and what we would need to do to reboot um, and, and, and think about it differently. But as you've heard, um, my optimism for finding a solution is, is real. Um, and so is my um, faith in the Germantown community and that we need this for Germantown for Upper Montgomery County. I agree, absolutely agree that we need this and, and I believe that we that it can be done as well. Um, and you mentioned that you're bringing in uh, constituents for an open house in May to hear from folks about what they want, is that right? Yes, May 11th, save the date. There'll be an artisan market, open house. We'll have, um, we have um, restricted funds to the Arts and Humanities Council uh, for the $14,000 for the um, strategic plan. And we're working with groups um, to bring in uh, 
community stakeholders, lots of different cultural groups have contacted Montgomery Planning um, with the, the work that they're doing in Germantown. Uh, it should be a great day. And then we, we have a website that's up and running. If you go to the website now, you can learn about the strategic plan and fill out a community survey form. Hopefully it's launched this week uh, so that we can go ahead and collect community stakeholder feedback ongoing. That's great. And then are there plans to, you know, it can, get, it can be difficult to get folks to come to a location? Um, are there plans to reach into the, I, I'm, I know this is dependent on funding and staffing um, as well as partnerships, but are there plans to go into the community, go to, you know, community centers or go to hit doors or, you know, various types of outreach in communities to, to reach them, the folks there? Do you, are you thinking about um, language accessibility? Um, do you have, is, is, are the, I know you have limited, very limited staff, are they um, multilingual, bilingual by any chance, or is that something that you're thinking about, or just curious about? Um, I think it's really key what you're saying about the community engagement and making sure that you're catering to your diverse audience and uh, just trying to better understand how we're working on that even before the strategic plan is presented in the winter or fall. So we have we have a, a database of folks that we are working with from different community cultural groups, Hispanic Chamber, um, Lakshmi Babu that runs um, Indian classical Kuchipudi dancing. So we have pinpointed um, community groups uh, and incentivizing their participation by spreading the word. Um, that's part of how the, the assets and resource will be used to compensate um, and bring communities in. Uh, the website is one of those where even though you might not come, can we get to you? And that same role in terms of having these community stakeholders um, be a voice and springboard for BlackRock is part of the strategy. I do have bilingual staff, and we are working on potentially translation survey uh, so that folks can that are joining us that day. But I, I do have staff that that speak Spanish, uh, so that has been addressed. But translating is, and again, uh, money is a constraint. It costs money to do things, um, but we're going to do the best that we can. It's sort of the black rock, rock way, <laughs> and, and, and make this happen. Great, I appreciate it, and I'll and I'll give planning a shout out to. I think they've really been a model for finding creative ways to get into the communities and again and I hear your point about that that takes money and funding and all that um, but they found creative ways to get into the communities and reach people who aren't normally engaged say in the planning process um, which could probably be used as a model here to reach people who aren't normally engaged uh, in some of the arts and other and cultural events and, and different types of community events that uh, that BlackRock might uh, host whether on site or in the community as well and so finding some of those ways to get out there would be great. And I, I look forward to a continued conversation about how the process of, uh, you know, of making improvements and hopefully finding new uh, creative sources of, of revenue or ways to draw the, and engage the community can happen before that fall date so that um, we can start hopefully meeting some milestones um, while you have, given that you already have some insights about the direct, the general direction that's needed um, mm -hmm. and, and we're not uh, you know, waiting it out any more than we have to. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Bethel. Um, thank you. Thank you for um, allow, uh, inviting me. I don't know if, <laughs> I don't know if it was an invit invitation, but thank you for having me. Um, and, and thank you all for being here. Um, and as many said, BlackRock is in a, in a unique situation, and we've known that for a very long time. BlackRock has just celebrated its 20th anniversary last year, very successful at providing uh, arts uh, and culture to the community. Um, but while it's been programming for the past 20 years, it has c continued to struggle financially for every single one of those 20 years, with the exception of the, the hub pivot um, during COVID. Um, so part of why it struggled is that the planned private funding has never reached ex expectation, but neither has Germantown itself, right? As a master planned corridor city, Germantown is expected to have significantly more jobs, significantly much more robust economy, and that never happened. And while the population continued to grow and diversify, the needs of the community grew, the private donations didn't. Um, Germantown 
today is a much different place than we had envisioned it to be 25 years ago. Um, and BlackRock has really successfully managed an evolution of a community by always being the heart and soul of the community. Um, so we're at an interesting place in the history of BlackRock and the history of Germantown and where we need to reevaluate how BlackRock fits into this community. Um, as the only major civic venue in the Up County, as been, has been said, we need to make sure that the doors remain open and determine what that sustainable path is forward. And I want to thank uh, the commit both committees. I want to thank uh, Council Member Ming for really asking very tough questions. Um, the issue of accountability and how we can make sure these funds are spent in a way that um, at the end, the end result is a sustainable path forward. That is so important to me. Um, and I, I feel like um, I, I, I am trusting the process, uh, the strategic planning process. And I, I believe, uh, similar to the discussions that we've had about the urban district in Germantown, we need to, we, the county, needs to really look at what services are provided to the community and how they can be provided. And BlackRock is such an integral part of that. And so um, I, I think that the path forward is going to be different. It, it has to be different. We've been doing this same thing for 20 years, and it has not uh, been successful in terms of the financial sustainability. So we must do something different. And um, as as a council, as a as a county administration, you know, it's our responsibility to make sure that that happens, um, and that we have um, uh, solid oversight of this of this funding. So, um, and I think that this request will allow BlackRock the time it takes and the resources it takes to determine that path. So um, I, I ask for your support in this supplemental. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Estrada. Uh, and, uh, thank you, Chair Stewart. And Councilmember Balcom, uh, the county executive echoes your interest in seeing Germantown finally uh, live up to its the expectations we had 25 years ago. There, yes, there have been fits and starts. We're very thrilled. Well, we're, while this is not the, the the arrangement we were hoping for, it is an opportunity, as you said, to 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 chart a new path for for BlackRock that is sustainable, that recognizes its importance to the community, uh, and at the same time, we're we're getting ready to announce um, uh, news about a business district grant in German Town Town Center, and working very closely with the chamber um, up there to to enable that. And there's a lot of energy in the community that we haven't seen. Well, it, it comes and goes over the time, time, but this time, let's not frustrate the community leaders and let's enable them to finally create the, the town they're, they're hoping to. Great. Um, thank you um, for that. I think um, moving forward, I think you heard um, from each of us uh, the importance of Black Rock, um, and thank you for doing that work. Um, Ms. Jenkins, thank you also for attending today and um, supporting the arts um, at Black Rock. Uh, I think before I ask um, the committees to vote, uh, just want to preface this on saying that if we move this forward to the full council, that we will get a much fuller package. Um, and all the questions that we raised here, that information will be provided. And then whatever mechanism we need to change the agreement so that we can have a council representative, because I will say from my perspective, um, as BlackRock is um, going down this path, I would re really like to see Councilmember Balcom <laughs> um, uh, officially part of those conversations. I know she has unofficially uh, been part of them, but I think it's important that, uh, you know, as we're appropriating this money, having going to have the conversation um, regarding the FY25 budget, that um, we have council representation there. So. Uh, with that, um, all those in favor of recommending this appropriation to the full council, please raise your hand. And that is everyone, both committees. So it's unanimous. All right. Well, thank you very much uh, for this, bringing this to, to us today, and we look forward to continuing the conversation. And that is our only agenda item today. So with that, uh, we are adjourned. Thank you.